Hello, how's everybody doing? Um, I just want to say that I am thankful and very blessed that Jesus came and saved me and died for me. I'm also very blessed to have such a wonderful family. Even though they're not perfect, I know that nobody is. But that doesn't mean that there won't be any problems or troubles in my life. Um, I'm thankful for everything that Jesus Christ has done for me and keeps on doing in my life. He is the, the, way, the way, the truth, and the life. He is the living bread that came down from heaven. If, I, if anybody eats of this bread, they shall never perish, but have everlasting life. Amen. I think we will never really get to know how everything really works in heaven down here. But I think we know what we can do to make it work the best we can here. You know, prayer is a powerful tool. Um, you know, temptation, I think, it will always be around you. It doesn't matter if you don't want to leave the church. If you were to be in a church 24-7, temptation or find a way to get in there why because all these churches have money coming in and out you know that's a big temp temp temptation to maybe a lot of the pastors a lot of the deacons the elders uh you know that's a big temptation right there money another thing that comes into church a lot is, uh, you know, it's, you know, uh, women, you know, and for some of us men, w women are a temptation, you know, and women are always going to come in to church, maybe new ones every week, you know, and that right there is a big temptation for a lot of my brothers, you know. Um, you know, so, but one thing we know is that, you know, those women coming in are our sisters. Even if they're not saved, they are our sisters. And we need to respect them for what they are, which are women, you know. You wouldn't disrespect your mom, so why would you disrespect, you know, these ladies coming into church, especially when they're coming into your father's house, you know. Would you disrespect a woman coming into your father that's here on earth if... They were coming to visit you. Would you disrespect them? No, you would be very polite, uh, very courteous to that person, and you you know that she's a friend of the family, and maybe even a a born again friend, which will make her your sister. So you would treat them very respectful, you know. And that's how we need to treat our sisters that are coming into church for the first time that might not know who Jesus Christ is. And we should try our hardest not to uh, send the wrong message. You know, let's not, let's not, let's, let's not, don't let us ruin their first uh, visit to church, you know, so they'll want to keep coming back, you know. We're not perfect. Uh, we're going to fall. The devil is still out there doing 
the best work that he can do. So we got to do the best work we can do to keep him away, away the farthest we can. Don't let him get close to us. Uh, you know, so you got women, money coming into churches, uh, technology. That could be temptation for somebody. Uh, and a lot of these churches have a lot of technology that that is run on a daily operations, whether it be, you know, desktop. Uh, desktops, uh, tablets, cell phones, uh, you know, unlimited access to the internet, you know, and whether you're a Christian or not, the internet is open to the internet. You can't push a button on your cell phone that says only access Christian uh, websites or apps because you know right there you know Facebook will be out of the picture YouTube will be out of the picture uh, uh, another one uh, would be Instagram um, Snapchat um a lot of these apps that we use on a daily basis, you know, wouldn't be on there if we could block everything that's secular to this world. And uh, so we just got to be careful to not get in too deep into those apps, you know. Don't keep looking don't don't keep looking in the in other words don't look into these apps more than what you're going to use it for because when you go browsing and browsing and browsing it'll lead you to a page that you might not want to see or to a video on youtube that you don't want to see but it just it started light but it ended dark you know uh You know, and, uh, you know, so the temptation, I think that, that we struggle with on a daily basis, it's at our church, you know, at our church. But we know that, that, you know, that, Temptation is, uh, it's, uh, we shouldn't, we shouldn't, uh, <clears throat> be afraid of it, you know, because we're in our Father's house, you know, so we shouldn't be afraid of that temptation in our church, churches, you know. That's why it's so important to read your Bible, uh, prayer, seek the Lord, help Him to remove any temptations, whether it be in church or, or when you're not in church. And God helps you in those areas. Uh, but I know there's more temptation when you're in the world than when you're when you're out of the world, because when you're out of the world, uh, you don't do stuff that you used to do when you were in the world. But you you are living in the world still, you know. You but you gotta be out of the world. You can't be in church and in the world at the same time, because that's enmity with God. The world is enmity with God, you know. Um, and reading the Bible really helps because it starts to clear the way you think and and then your thoughts become, you know, positive thoughts because then you start to think about 
well, how were our brothers? Um, you, you can just imagine what David did on a daily basis, you know. And the Bible says that the devil tempted him. Maybe a lot of times, but there are a few times that says that David uh, gave in to the devil and sinned against God. But I don't know if that's the only time he sinned, but I'm pretty sure he sinned more than the times the Bible talks about, you know, because I doubt David only sinned those times the Bible said he sinned, but those were the sins that God wanted to bring to light for our benefit in these times. You know, the one with Bathsheba and the one when he counted Israel. Um, and, you know, but I'm pretty sure those are not the only two times that David sinned while he was on the earth. I know there had to be many, many, many times because he was in the flesh. Yes, he was a man after God's own heart. And yes, he had the the Ark of the Covenant with him. He had a priest, you know, and uh, he had prophets that talked with God you know but that doesn't mean that he was not capable of sinning which we find out he was and us as well you know how much more us when we can't we don't have a prophet that communicates with God directly you know that's where we communicate with God directly cause we don't need prophets anymore the veil was torn, split in two, and God gave all of us access to go into the holiest of holiest with Jesus Christ and and ask Him, you know. Ask Him, and God speaks through your heart, you know, because sometimes you know, you kind of almost hear the voice of God talking to you through your heart, you know. You know, the Holy Spirit's inside you and He tells you what's wrong too when when you give God the full control of your body, you know. And uh but all of us are brothers and sisters, uh we need to love one another the best way we can, you know. The best way we can. Because we can't show that love that Jesus Christ showed to everybody on this earth by giving his life for all of us. But we still can't show them the way we know how to show love, you know, the best way we can, you know.